This video is sponsored by Corvus Belly. Something that often stands between me and getting my painting projects done is the idea of painting versus trying to do a really good job. And it's not a real problem, it's more of a mental problem. For me, I love painting. It's nice and quick and I leverage all my tools, my airbrush, my contrast paint, my speed paint. But trying to do a really good job is hard and it takes a long time and it involves carefully layering up highlight after highlight purposefully and carefully because that is the real way to paint and to do a really good job. And so what often happens is I'll take those sorts of projects that I really want to baby and put my time into and I kind of put them off into the future when I'll have time because right now I just want to crank through some orcs. But that's not really true. Almost all of my favorite paint jobs have really snuck up on me. It's never really when I'm trying really, really hard to do a good job that I fall in love with the results. It's always when I'm just painting. And so really it's not about painting versus trying to do a really good job. It's just the process. And I wanna try to leverage as many tools as I can to get something really, really good in record time. And I have a heck of a model to try this hypothesis out on. This model is a Pan Oceania Scarecrow from the new Infinity Sand Trap Battle Pack, available for pre-order now. And it's about as tiny and detailed as it gets, covered in overlapping armor, over top of a zany undersuit with straps, buckles, and tassels galore. Even his tuchus is superbly rendered. This is exactly the type of mini I would put off until I have the time to really get it right. But that time never really comes, and I have a lot of minis just like this. These JSA Karakuri special project robots have been sitting on my desk for months waiting for this mythical good job, and I have a lot more infinity where they came from. I need to buckle down and just give it a try. First things first, getting this model all glued together. In the world of minis, if I can't have plastic, I prefer metal. The weight feels nice, and the metal can be perfected a lot easier than resin in my experience. In the world of metal models, I find super glue very meh at keeping them together. And the problem is that super glue dries incredibly hard, but the metal that metal models are made out of is not. And so every time I rock up to the friendly local game store and I'm a little bit less than careful with my models, which is always, I tend to bump them and drop them and that leads to a little bit of twisting and a little bit of bending. And then when that happens, the metal peels away from the super hard layer of super glue. What I find works much better is epoxy. And my personal favorite, JB Quick Weld. Epoxy is, in theory, the best glue ever, but it's expensive and stanky and takes much longer to dry than other glues, so really I only use it in special circumstances when I need the incredible sticking power. I mixed up the two halves and used a toothpick to lather in the goo and squish the parts together, holding them for six minutes. Once I can feel the epoxy getting sticky, I know the model is set up. It'll take a full 24 hours to cure, but it's not going anywhere after six minutes. And speaking of not going anywhere, this model has some metal tabs under his feet, which is a godsend for keeping this mini stuck down. To get him onto his base, I dipped his tabs into some paint and then pressed them down onto the base so I know exactly where I need holes. I drilled holes just big enough for the tabs to fit and now I can start building up the base. I took some 1 8 inch cork, lathered up the base with super glue and then stuck it down. Then I used my Dremel tool to grind down the sides, finishing it off with a nail file to get a smooth bump of cork for him to go on. I open the holes back up and test fit them. I need to get rid of a little cork where his tactical rock sits, and then I put some texture paste all over, squishing them down for good with a little bit of super glue. And I locked them down with more glue from underneath on his tabs. I super glued some rocks, squishing them down into the wet mud, and the base is finished. This might seem like a silly way to do earth bases because it feels like you're just building up a pitcher's mound, and you are, but I like it because it makes so much more of the base visible from any angle. I got my little pano warrior all ready to rock and roll, and now that it's time for painting, I'm thinking about what really drew me to Infinity, and that is the cool stuff, the weapons, the armor. And so I wanna do the base coats in such a way that I can rocket through them and get to the really fun stuff of perfecting all of the little details. I started off with a black prime, doing about three coats of dustings with hair dryer blasts in between to get it there as fast as possible. Then I threw some white ink into my airbrush and zenithaled the mini, focusing on his head and trying to avoid the base. Now to start laying down some colors. First, a speed paint blue with one drop of thinner over all the armor bits. In addition to giving me some contrast, this paint is really wet and flows off the brush so I can lay this paint down much faster than opaque colors. After the blue, I hit all the cloth with a 50-50 mix of black speed paint and thinner. I threw some red speed paint over his scary mask and for his guns, I used one of my favorite paints for weapons, Rattling Grime. It's black with just a little bit of brown. Now I've got all the colors down. The airbrush zenithal gave me my highlights and shadows, and the contrast paint and speed paint gave me color and some contrast. And I timed myself, it only took 30 minutes. My mental block of doing a really good job takes a really long time is starting to crumble away. Now I've got the big steps all done, I get to have the really fun stuff of going from big to small and focusing on the details. 
I put on my palette a bright saturated blue, a warm white, and some neon green. I'm gonna use these colors to build up my saturation. I put the blue over 25% of the armor bits, hitting the raised areas and things I wanted to bring some more attention to. Then I mixed in more of my warm white and neon green to brighten the blue and shift it into green, and I applied this in smaller layers to all the same spots. This brightening with a different color, green over blue, helps to make these transitions more dramatic. For all the cloth bits, I took a mid-tone gray and did the exact same thing. The contrast paint highlighted all the raised portions of the model sculpt, so I can follow this as a guide for where to put the new paint. And I took special care to make sure his rear got the attention it needed. After the gray, I did another round of highlighting using gray mixed with white paint. Now for his head, and red is tricky to highlight. Since this guy is out in the sun of the sand trap base, I want to create a reflection, so I mixed neon orange into the red and painted this around the top of his mask. I like how important the red feels, so I decided to freehand some red stripes down his little tactical shoulder wraps. Now my colors that were blocked in with simple speed paints have been accented with some highlights, and all in all, I haven't really spent that much time painting. An hour and 40 minutes in, and he is looking pretty close to being done. However, not a big fan of the gray. Now that I see it on him, it's lacking a little bit of something. Now, was that something I would have discovered by trying harder? No. I only know now because I can see it in front of me. Luckily, paint is an additive process, so I can fix it. And to fix it, I don't want to repaint. That would be a waste of time. I like the values I have, I just want to bring in some color. So, transparent inks to the rescue. This is raw sienna, a semi-transparent color. I loaded this up in a brush and rubbed it over the gray. It lets all my previous layers be seen through while bringing a touch of warmth. This turned the tan white, but the black still feels cold and desaturated, so I took a red earth transparent ink and glazed this over the black parts of his clothing. This one-two punch of inks let me edit the mini super quick, without needing to do any repainting. Now that I have basically the whole model done, I can really see the sculpt and make some informed decisions on the details, like these little buckles on his front and legs. I think these would look good in the same blue as his armor, so with just a few swipes of my paintbrush, I rendered these. Now for some of the details, like his glowy spooky eyes. I dripped white paint into the sockets, then painted neon green over top, and then dripped just a little bit of jade contrast paint into the sockets. And for the weapons, I dry brushed them with a light gray, reusing some of the paint I used for the clothing. Another benefit to adding color to his cloth is the weapons stand out a lot more. I freehanded some red stripes onto his boarding shotgun to match his face and shoulders, and I put a stripe of red over his little knife. Now, after correcting with inks and picking out a few of the details, he feels done, and a cut above my usual painting, while not having taken a ton of time. I am at 2 hours and 20 minutes on this sucker, and he is done. <sighs> but I'm not quite happy with him yet. He's missing a little something. Right now, I can kind of tell that I spent 2 hours and 20 minutes on him, but I have some ideas. I have some big ideas for the base, because right now, I feel like he's lacking, and I think I can fix it with the base. And you know it's never lacking. That's right. Eonsofbattle.com. Eonsofbattle.com is the place to find our merch, like our new Nick and Jay dice, and the best way to support us doing what we do with a membership. Each month, members will get a credit that they can use on our new monthly terrain pack or any previous pack we have ever made. For the month of October, we have expanded on our orc terrain with the Orc Rocket Factory. Fill your game boards with ramshackle walls and the Grizzly Gate with an explosive flare. Man the battlements of an orc weapons workshop absolutely dripping with bombs, rockets, and pointy missiles. This modular terrain is fully compatible with our previous orc brewery and the Octaris terrain and can be assembled into all sorts of shapes ready to detonate at a moment's notice. I took some magenta ink into my airbrush and sprayed this from upside down, hitting his legs and butt. Just a little to tint all the work I've done and get him ready for a very eye-catching base. I dusted this magenta over the ground in preparation for some speed paints. Some magenta and purple. This darkens the base, makes it very saturated, and highlights the texture on the sand in one go. I did a few swipes of pink paint with my dry brush to further highlight the sand, and infinity bases have facing markers on them. This guy is a pan-oceania guy, I think blue would look good for these markings. I gave him a blast of satin varnish to keep my paint safe, and now for another easy way to add a lot to the mini quickly, tufts and paper plants. I have some neon plants from Gamergrass, these will match the base perfectly. These little flat plants can get crimped and shaped with my fingers and then glued down to the base. And I took these large dark purple grass tufts, cut them into little chunks and stuck them down here and there. These plants help sell the magenta airbrushing I did, reflecting the crazy purple light onto his armor. One thing with grass tufts, especially bigger ones, is you don't want them overhanging the base too much. So I carefully plucked the long strands sticking out over the base and my little dude is perfect. A little under three hours to get this guy tip top. I really like how the purple base turned out. In the world of infinity, humans have spread out across the galaxy and a little bit beyond that. And so it is very plausible that the Pan Oceania, which is what this guy is, could have made it to a purple earthed planet. Earth as in dirt, not Earth as in Earth. Although it is kind of funny that the planet Earth is called dirt. 
My Infinity Collection is one of those things that I very much put away to save for later when I have time to paint really good, but three hours. That's not bad at all, and I really like how this guy came out. Really, I could pour more time into this, and if I spent eight hours, it would look better. But would it matter? With three hours of pop and Infinity, a skirmish-based game, needing between 10 and 20 models, I could be gaming with these suckers pretty darn soon. Another thing I learned from this fella is I kinda dig painting blue. My plan for Infinity was to do some JSA, the Japanese Successionist Army, and the Nomads, the spacefaring libertarians of the Infinity setting. But now that I've painted this guy up, and I really enjoyed it, and I really got it done in a timely manner, I might do a little bit more Pan Oceania. If any of y'all out there have some models you've been holding off on until you can do them justice, just do them. Throw some paint on there and see what happens. There will never be a better time, and the sooner you get paint on there, the sooner you can get to collecting and gaming. A big thanks to Corvus Belly for sponsoring this video and making such a cool game with cool models. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.